So let's look at the pre-computed effects section. It's this section here. There's sort of a, a settings icon and a little valve icon for two different options. Now the first one is remove DC offset. Um, you'll sometimes, very rarely though nowadays, see a DC offset on the recording. Um, you'll see this recording, it won't be central like this is. Everything will be skewed to one side. Now don't be mistaken because this can often happen with brass recordings due to the nature of them. Generally though, remove DC offset, you're not going to need it unless you specifically need it and then you'll know. Normalize, what normalize does, it brings the loudest point of a piece of audio up to zero. Um, this was recorded pretty well, but if I normalize it, it does increase by just a little fraction. If the sample you've taken is really dynamic and then the bit you've actually uh, decided to sample is really quiet, normalize might help you just bring that out and make mixing a little bit easier. Bear in mind, if you've recorded it at a low bit rate, it's not going to sound great when you normalize it. So reverse lets us have a good bit of flex, it reverses that sample. However, it's not going to take effect while we've got things like crossfades and sample offsets in place. If we were to take something else, we can flip that quite easily. Really great for just quick reverse effects. Next, we've got reverse polarity. This comes into effect when we layer lots of sounds. Snares are a really good example. If we have a couple of snares layered together, sometimes they start to cancel each other out. It's because they've come in and out of polarity with each other. Reversing polarity or reversing the phase can resolve that for us pretty quickly. You can just see that it's doing the complete inverse. It's going to sound the same. <laughs> but it would behave a little bit different. Fade stereo fades from the left to the right channel. Super easy effect to throw in there. Swap stereo swaps the left and right channel. So if we click the little valve icon, we've got some effects in here. Boost is kind of cool, um, especially if you put clip on, you can really slam drum samples and make some crazy things happen in here. Take clip off. I don't want to push it much past that because it's going to get really loud. Experiment with it, it's really cool on kick drums. Um, EQ, it's sort of a, a bit of a skew of an EQ. It goes one way or the other. Um, it, it's kind of like a, a tilt. It lifts everything up a little bit. Just have a listen to what it does. Next, we've got ring modulation. Ring modulation is taking a bit of the signal, sending it out and back into itself to modulate itself. Um, we've got the frequency just next to it, and this can cause some crazy effects. It's great for lo-fi beat creation. Next, we've got our filter cutoff. Notice how this affects the sound. So this is actually creating that effect and then redoing the sound to correspond with it. And we've got a resonance for that filter. Next, we've got some built-in reverb. There's an A and B switch. And we can just dial it in as such. We can combine that with stereo delay. And lastly, pogo effect. Super quick and easy tape stops and speed ups. And those are the pre-computed effects and how you can play around with them. Pogo effects can be really cool if you make a copy of a sample and just pogo effect one and just give a quick slowdown before going back into something else. We'll maybe look at doing that further on into the course.